happens really rough when you can't. Um, I just did a show recently that when we began dubbing it, it still had about six or seven weeks to go in Japan, and I had to cast things and go, I hope this new actor doesn't have to do something crazy as this character in the end, so it worked out well. It's funny the story that you just told, because this happened to me last week. Um, in session, I had the same thing. Uh, the director was saying, "Yeah, he had a question that went right to the source for it." And they basically said, "No, I'm not going to tell you." Yeah, well, we don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but I got a cute certain thing, so I guess that happens all over the planet. <laughs> um, yeah, Richard. Um, this works better for for non-directors, but have you guys happened happened to uh, um, get in trouble or or get yelled at by a superior in your job, or maybe got in a fight? <laughs> Voice actor fights are funny because they stand nowhere near each other and just scream at each other as just different characters. <laughs> There's a lot of Kamehameha! <laughs> that, that makes you fall down. <laughs> I find that if you're argumentative or scrappy, they're not going to hire you again. So, I'm on my best behavior. <laughs> Not like here. <laughs> I don't think we have any fights. Uh, I had one thing with, with Shemmel that he's talked about, actually, on Giant Robo. He came in, he was actually, so, uh, I'd cast uh, the late, great Maddie Blaustein, uh, Meowth and Pokemon and stuff, she was amazing. And uh, to, to do this, this tough character, who did, it was amazing. Um, but, wasn't able to do it. Maddie wasn't able to come in, so I was like, oh, you know what, now what am I gonna do? And then I was like, oh, 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 I should totally get Shemmel. In fact, I think Shemmel's a better choice, so good, good, I'll get Shemmel. So he comes in, and apparently he's kind of butt sore, because he's like, well, uh, you know, uh, I'm really good at what I do, so uh, I don't know why I was second fiddle. And I was like, no, 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 actually, it was my mistake. Um, I cast the wrong person, couldn't make it, it's Kismet. Fate's decided that you should be this part, and it's right, and I'm so glad you're doing it, because you're more like this character. It's kind of goku -y. He's big, powerful, He's a little immature, so you're you're the right guy for the job, right? He's like, yeah, well, sort sort sort. So then we, it sort of becomes like this little rift, and I'm like, dude, are you gonna get over this and like work? And he's like, yeah, what? I sh whatever, just tell me what to do. So I'm telling him what to do, and he's like, I, I I don't know what you want me to do. And I was like, I'm telling you what to do, but he can't get over this idea that he's not picked first, right? So I'm like, seriously, seriously. He goes, yeah, well, I, I don't know what you want me to do, so I'm just gonna do whatever you say. So what do you want me to do? And I was like, there you go, do this, do this, do this, fine. Ah! Do this, do this, do this, Ryan, brah! And he did it. And it ended up being like his best work ever. <laughs> we were at a convention in Hawaii, and someone's like, what's the best job you ever did? He's like, well, uh, 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 we're doing Giant Robo, and I didn't know what was going on, and I just finally was like, fine, whatever, and that's the best thing I ever did. So I was like, wow, that's amazing. That's a weird process. <laughs> but that little fight turned into, like, he just totally let his guard entirely down, and it was like, was the best at taking direction in like any session I've ever done. After the fight, yeah, but it was it was kind of a weird, amazing little session, and uh, it was really good. And and uh, it was he was fantastic in the role. And I got him a cell when I went to Japan. It was so good. Nice. Um, with the camera. Okay, was there one role any of you ever wanted to do more than anything, but you didn't get the role? I, th I thought it was going to be Donatello on Turtles. I was like, I'm a nerd. I can talk about all this tech stuff with conviction and correct all the mistakes in the script. And then I didn't get it. I got Leo. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, here comes the ambulance. <laughs> go in to audition for something, we all want the lead because that means they have the most lines, which equals the most hours, which equals the most money, which means we can pay our bills. So, um, like, we always want that part, and we always think that we're perfect for it, because every actor has a certain amount of ego that you kind of have to have in order to have enough confidence to keep getting rejected time and time oh, again. Yes. Um, yeah, so I think that there are plenty of roles that I always wanted really badly going into the audition process, but I found that when I don't get them and maybe I even cast as someone else in the show, a little part, a medium-sized part, whatever, um, I always love that random little <coughs> character almost more. Because to be honest, um, a lot of the lead characters from show to show kind of be the same. Vocally, it's the hero voice or the heroine voice, the, you know, the scrappy teenager or the pretty princess. And like they kind of do some of the same things from show to show, so it's nice when you don't get the big part and play the smaller role and get to do different things with your voice and have different circumstances. Um, 
Um, does anybody, this is not an anime show, but anybody see, watch a show called Johnny Test? Yes. Well, I auditioned for that show, um, and then never heard nothing. And then I got a call back for it, like, ages later. So I auditioned again, and they had basically started recording it with a very talented lady uh, playing Johnny. Okay, okay, that was her. <laughs> You're not supposed to say the sort one. Um, and they just decided to, to go a different, a different way, right? So, and she had other characters on the show, so no big deal. So they wanted to cast a guy to play Johnny. So suddenly I got the part. I was stoked. I had, I, for whatever reason, I could get lead roles in anime series from time to time, but prelay work, like American cartoons, for whatever reason, I had a hard time. Hadn't really worked, you know, on, on a, on a prelay show since X-Men. Um, so I got the part. Went back, re-recorded the first four episodes that they had done, recorded uh, another three episodes, and then was recast. They cast some guy, uh, a guy out of L.A. So, yeah, who does a great job, but uh, that was crushing to me. And they also, the, the thing that drives me nuts is um, they had to, they cast me with the idea they were going to pitch shift my voice, which I would never had done to me before. But I never actually did get to hear what my voice sounded like. Shit, it was up, yeah. But I never got to hear it playback or anything, what it was actually gonna sound like. So some of the direction that I got was really difficult for me because they wanted to have like these big, you know, crazy girly wah type screams, but they couldn't be too high because then if they shifted it, it was gonna sound like mutants or something like that. So, <laughs> so that, was, that was the role that I wanted, had, and then lost. Crushing. But it is what it is. Like you were saying, it's an industry of rejection. If you don't have thick skin, you're not going to make it in the acting business because you have to be able to just kind of let things, let things go. Roll with the punches, as they say. In, that's not acting terms, but okay. <laughs> in boxing, you roll with the punches. They're talking, so I'll pick the guy with the lightsaber. Question. How do you go from being a voice actor to being the ADR director? Is it just a natural progression over time or something you want to do because you want to change the pace? Shit, I. I just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's